Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Sacred Union Energy Update. As you can see, I am back. I'm happy to be back, but also I'm very sad to have left where I was. It is a, a place that now has a piece of my heart. Um, I can't wait to go back. Um, considering some life changes now. Really considering some life changes. No hasty decisions. Just kind of seeing where I'm being guided. But the whole week that I was away, it was just connection and opportunity and just alignment. And it was just so incredibly beautiful. Um, so I'm going to share some of my experiences when I feel called to. I am feeling called to, but not quite yet. Uh, maybe in some sacred channelings coming up. Um, over this next week or some sacred union energy updates or maybe I'll come out during the reading who knows I just go where spirit guides me when it comes to sharing my own experiences but um I've realized a lot about this journey I've realized a lot about where I am and I've realized a lot about uh soulmate versus the twin flame connection I have met somebody have met um somebody who really embodies that kind of soulmate energy um whether it's platonic or whether it's romantic, I do feel like there are soulmates that are starting to come in, soul family that are starting to come in. Could be for a season, could be for a purpose, a reason. It could be for lifetimes. Uh, just allow things to unfold, just allow it to be seen. Um, and, you know, allow them to show you just as you are showing them whatever it needs it is that you need to um it seems to be there's a lot of healing with regards to relationship with regards to connection so just allow yourself to open up and receive um the past several weeks the past several days i've been getting the phrase let yourself be loved let yourself be loved let yourself Love and be loved, yet let yourself love who you love. That could be your counterpart, even if there is nothing in the physical that points to any kind of interaction or communication or any kind of action. Let yourself still be open to loving. Let yourself receive love from the universe, from people in your life, from your family, from your friends, from soul family, from beautiful connections. I had the opportunity to meet some really beautiful people during my trip, um, including one woman who really stood out to me because I had met her when I was there back in September. And it was a really beautiful just exchange that we were having, just really sweet energy from her. And it was almost like just allowing myself to receive love from the universe, from God, through these interactions, through these connections. Connection is what it is all about about allowing ourselves to love and be loved let yourself be loved by the universe by opportunities that come in by situations that occur in in this beautiful positive light um when i say situations i mean learning experiences or just really happy experiences happy opportunities happy connections let yourself be loved Okay, we are going to do something a little bit different tonight. We're going to just use the tarot. Maybe we'll pull some other cards. We'll see. But I want to do kind of a set spread. I want to look at the headspace and heart space of both counterparts. I want to bring it down a little bit um, as far as what we're channeling, the energies that we're channeling. Not necessarily higher self, but I want to see what's going on in the physical 3D kind of aspect, the physical 3D world. We did channel while I was away an Ascension Relationships reading that was very powerful. Make sure that you check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description box below. Um, but we're going to see what's going on with these counterparts. This feels... Yeah, let's do this for the masculine. All right, so let's get the headspace and the heart space for both counterparts, please. We're going to do the headspace for the masculine first. And I want to get the cards first. So if you guys want to skip ahead, feel free to skip ahead a little bit. All right, headspace for the divine masculine, please. Headspace for the divine masculine. Thank you. 
Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to come out. Okay. Headspace for the Divine Masculine. And the heart space for the Divine Masculine. Nope, they want me to wait. I just do what I'm told. And the head space for the Divine Feminine. Wow. Yeah. Not surprised to see that either. And the head space for the Divine Feminine. Okay. Interesting, interesting. I'm going to start with the bottom of the decks. For the Divine Masculine, on the bottom of the deck, we have the Lovers. The bottom of the deck, we have, for the Divine Feminine, we have the Death card. I'm going to take these both because we're going to channel from them. I'm going to take these as well. Wow. I'm going to take these as well. There we go. I'm going to take these as well. Okay. And, uh, all right, you guys know how I channel. You guys know how I do it. We're going to channel this to begin. Interesting, interesting energies here. All right. I'm not going to get too much into what we've already channeled, but I'm picking up that this is a continuation of those past channelings, especially the Union of Opposites channelings, on both Susan Dawn Ascension Connections and here in the previous Sacred Union Energy Update. Also make sure that you're checking out the Ascension Relationships video. All of the links of interest that we're ref referencing here in this reading, if you missed anything, go back and check it out. I'll put that in the description box, put all the links in the description box so that you don't miss anything um, because I don't want to repeat so much. But we've been channeling that the Divine Masculine especially has been going through an accelerated ascension since the Lionsgate 8-8 portal. And this can be seen as a lot of very physical changes, physical changes in their human experience because that's really how the Divine Masculine experiences their ascension journey they experience it through a lot of physicality they're very grounded they're very present they're very structured they're very physical does not mean to say that they don't have downloads or insight or intuition that's the feminine energy that rises within them but their core essence is very physical very action oriented very doing versus being that's core divine masculine or conscious masculine energy and so with this accelerated ascension with the full moon uh, eclipse and the 1111 portal which operated as kind of like a doorway a gateway to step into the new version of themselves to step into a new life there's been this this higher level awakening now your divine mansion could have already gone through several layers of awakening um but there's always a set inner spiral there's always more to understand there's always more to to shift within yourself um it's a broader perspective, not a narrower perspective. We open up, we don't close off. And so there's always more to understand, uh, to heal, to grow, to expand, to ascend. <laughs> there's always more. Um, that is the beauty of this universe. It's the expansive nature of the universe, thus the expansive nature of us. And if you're finding yourself in a place where you are restricting or confining or getting back into like a little narrow box, um, then there's something to discover there. There's something to look at there because we are meant to be expansive and open and growing in that respect. Um, and I'm going to share more about that in another channeling. Um, so there's been this accelerated ascension. It might have seemed to the divine feminine because the divine masculine seems like he's been in a little bit of like a hermit energy um he's been learning how to come out of the cave so to speak we channeled that as well coming out of the cave it's this energy of understanding oneself on a higher level but having to go within deeper to acknowledge that to understand that to shift within oneself um what i'm feeling is divine feminine you might not be seeing the full picture 
Um, you might get glimpses of it. You might have feelings of it. But in your very physical 3D world, it might feel like there's an ending. It might feel like it's complete closure. It might feel like it's that door is shut and it's not opening again. Whereas for the Divine Masculines, they are very focused on the connection. You just can't see it. You might be able to sense it energetically, but you just can't see it. I'll share with you guys, my Divine Masculine blocked me last week. I, I realized that um, just out of the blue. We have not talked for three and a half months. It is our longest separation. Um, and I didn't feel, you know, any sense of rejection. I didn't feel any sense of abandonment from that. Or I should say, in the beginning, because it felt like it was so energetic. Out of nowhere, he blocked me. We hadn't even been communicating, um, and he just blocked me. Um, it was either he was feeling me energetically, or he saw something that triggered him, um, which means that he was keeping updated on me, you know, that he was watching me or whatever. There is no logical explanation for why he should have blocked me, because we already had been not communicating. Um, and that was through his choice. It was his choice not to communicate. Um, he ended communication and I just realized that I could not put myself through that same pattern of trying to fix things. I could not put myself through that pattern of trying to reach out. My Everything in my intuition said not to um, because otherwise I would just be betraying myself and abandoning myself trying to to put in the effort where it felt like it wasn't matching. Um, there were some instances where abandonment came up. There were some instances where it felt like, um, he just left me because in a way it felt like he did because I've been through so much with him. And when I needed him, it felt like, where was he? And that's normal for us to feel on this journey. Not that that's acceptable. We're not excusing that, but a lot of us feel that on our journey where the Divine Masculine is prioritizing other people, even though they, they, they love you and they care about you, it's almost like they put you second or third or fourth or fifth. They prioritize everything else over you, even strangers over you, it feels like. And it's like, wait a minute, what is going on here? And I've experienced that in my journey and I've realized where I was giving too much. Um, I don't want to put it that way. I want to put it in such a way uh, to explain it better. It's not that you're giving too much. It's that you're sacrificing yourself. It's that you're abandoning yourself. It's that you are people pleasing. You're trying to prove your love. You're trying to maybe even compare yourself to other people. Um, trying to prove yourself um, that you're worthy or that you're valuable. Because when somebody pulls back their affection, then sometimes it makes you feel like, well, wait a minute, why wasn't I, you know, valued in this connection? Why wasn't I appreciated? Like you seem to appreciate other people, like you seem to be there for other people. Through some kind of degree, we as feminines experience this on our journey, and it's very, very painful. But when I look back at my own journey, I can see Again, it's not excused behavior. We're not tolerating that anymore. We're not allowing that anymore. But we can see where that showed us where our own wounding was, where that showed us where the holes are, where we need to fill ourselves up on more love and allow ourselves to receive that love in return, where we were kind of absent of that love in some respect within us. Uh, we had to shift our behaviors. We had to shift our patterns. We had to take accountability for the role that we were playing in that kind of dance. Um, for myself, it was I was overgiving. I was sacrificing. I was, in essence, trying to prove my love um, when love just naturally is. I had a, a friend who said, Susan, he blocked you. You know, how do you feel? And I said, if that's what he needs to do, then I understand it. I just love him and I want him to be happy. And of course, I'm moving through my own emotions of it. You know, that abandonment, that feeling left out, that what the hell. <laughs> but I also just said to myself and to her, I love him. I just love him and I just want him to be happy and healthy and live the best life that he wants to live. As long as he is happy and healthy, then it's all good. It's all good, whatever it is that he needs to do. And she said that right there, because you have no attachment to him or the outcome, that right there is unconditional love. And um, 
I realized, yeah, I didn't need anything from him. Of course, I want him or I wanted him because we had spent so much of our relationship together. But there was also so many unhealthy behaviors, so many unhealthy patterns. Um, it just wasn't a healthy connection like it could have been. And so for myself, when communication ended, I couldn't keep putting myself forward. I couldn't keep giving to the connection. I, I had to take care of myself. I had to take care of my own heart. I had to mend what was broken inside of me. I had to heal myself. And if I was giving so much to this other person that I love so much, I couldn't help myself. And that's been like that for the past year where I had to make really difficult decisions to love myself and to take care of myself, especially when I was going through some very difficult and even traumatic experiences, trying to be there for somebody, but also needing to be there for myself and needing to be able to receive that support in return. So on the surface, it looks like it's completely done. And maybe it is. I do not know where this journey leads us. I truly don't. Um, all I can go by is what I channel and I believe in what I, I channel. I have no reason not to anymore. Um, there is this energy underneath the surface of transformation that even though it looks like a major ending, something is transforming for you, Divine Feminines. We'll get into that in a minute. But over on the Divine Masculine side, they are very, very focused on this connection and on the love. So then we have the Tower and the Magician. Divine Feminine, I feel like with this ending, you have just been in your creatorship. You have been in your place of self-empowerment. You have been in your place of self-mastery, where you are creating and manifesting the life of your dreams. And you're meant to be doing that. Again, a lot of Divine Feminines, they sacrifice themselves. They overgive themselves. They people please. They hold themselves back, especially for the sake of partners or for the sake of connections. When a partnership, a relationship, a union is about two parties coming together to build that third entity, to build that relationship together. But so much, it goes to one extreme or the other. And so Divine Feminines, I feel like you are really allowing yourself to dream again and open up to yourself again with this magician energy. I feel like the Divine Magician is feeling this energy and maybe even experiencing some tower moments in their life because of it. They're stopping me. They want me to read the channeling that I did. I think it was yesterday. And I'm going to read it to you guys. It's available on my YouTube community tab. It's available on Instagram and on Facebook. Make sure that you are following me in all of those places so that you don't miss anything. So the cards that came out were the Ace of Wands, the Seven of Cups, and the Six of Swords. And on the bottom of the deck was the Two of Cups. And I wasn't too surprised to see all of that um, because it really felt like um, the energy that I had been just picking up on and channeling throughout the day. So what I said was, or what I channeled was, there's a lot of longing coming in through the energies today. It feels like it's especially coming from the Divine Masculine that lover's energy, and is showing up as a mix of emotions, showing up as longing, confusion, a desire to take action and communicate, a wanting of affection both to express and receive, both in, wanting to express love and longing for the Divine Feminine and to receive that love and longing from her as well, missing her, really missing her energy, really feeling the absence of her. This Divine Masculine is, in a word, missing his Divine Feminine and experiencing a jumble of emotions that all point back to the root energy of love. Uh, there is a focus on the heart space. There might be a lot that's happening within his human experience that might be either trying to distract him away from his love for the Divine Feminine or that may be reminding him of his Divine Feminine, causing some tower moments and thus some emotional confusion. We're seeing that here. Um, and I knew that there was going to be more to channel with this energy that I was picking up on in these, these cards. Um, so there might be a lot that's either distracting the divine masculine, by which I mean there could be tower moments that they want to come towards the divine feminine, but they're just like 
uh, being distracted and pulled away from her at this time from situations, from other relationships, from other dynamics. Um, so they want to come towards you, but they're being pulled away or they're being reminded of the divine feminine. And that's bringing up a lot of their own wounding, a lot of their own pain, um, that needing to take self-responsibility and self-accountability, um, they're having a lot of a certain segment of the collective might be having a lot of trouble with that because it's also bringing up a lot of shame and a lot of guilt that they have to work through. They have to work through that. They have to get through that and understand that accountability and responsibility does not equate to shame. It does not equate to guilt. There's a lot of self-forgiveness that's coming up for this other group that I'm channeling for. So that could be creating some tarot moments as well. They're missing their divine feminine. Um, and everything is reminding them of their divine feminine. So whether you're in no contact or a lack of communication, or you're at a physical distance from one another, this divine masculine wants nothing more than to steer the boat in the right direction and reunite through a sincere offering of the heart. However, I was also picking up on some resistance that feels like a bit of stubborn, defiant, or prideful energy. So with the Four of Wands and with the Eight of Swords here, I feel like they want to reunite. They want this union with the Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine, you might be in your mind like, I'm not seeing this. How is this possible? There's nothing happening. He's not here. What is happening? So there's a lot of illusion that's at play right now. Ten of Wands and the... Six of Cups here. It's like you want this reunion as well. You want to come together as well, but you're still not seeing how this could possibly happen. But you're feeling it within your heart. You're feeling some kind of energetic pull towards each other in your heart. So for the Divine Masculine, I was picking up on that resistance again. Stubborn energy, defiant energy, prideful energy. It's like as soon as we say um, that the Divine Masculine is missing the Divine Feminine. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That's defiance. It's avoidance. It's it's trying to protect the heart because if they feel too much, it's like, what happens? It's like, what happens to me if I feel so much? What happens to me if I let myself love her? What happens to me? Well, what happens is you love. What happens is you open up. What happens is you just become love. You don't hold yourself back from who you truly are because who you truly are is love. Um, this divine masculine may be desiring the divine feminine to bridge the gaps and take the first steps, wanting her to interact first. But, and so she's picking up on this energy as if it's her own desire and longing to reach out again, wanting to communicate. Divine masculine is feeling the burden of this, wanting to come forward, and divine feminine's like, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling your energy. It's almost like I want to reach out too, but I know that I'm not meant to. I know that I'm not meant to. She's maintaining her boundaries in this way, not from the same stubborn energy that the divine masculine is in, but just from a place of self-empowerment. This is her own choice not to repeat repeat the past cycles. Remember what I was saying? Um, how my divine counterpart um basically end of communication and I just knew that I wasn't meant to I tried I I I shared a little bit of my feelings expressed my thoughts was vulnerable um took accountability for my role in in that separation um but there was no response and there hasn't been a response for almost four months now and I knew that in this time I was not meant to reach out because then I would just be pulled back into that same cycle and I know that I'm just not meant to do that um, and there's been a tremendous amount of inner growth for me. I can't speak for my divine masculine, but there's been a, a tremendous amount of inner growth for me because of that. A lot of realizations, a lot of um, understanding of myself, a lot of healing of myself that has happened throughout this time of separation that possibly would not have happened if we were still together or if I had reached out because we would possibly have just gotten caught in another loop of triggering each other. Um, and projecting onto each other. There sometimes needs to be a healing apart in order for you guys to to truly understand each other and see each other without the wounding, without the projections activated, without the blame, without the triggers, um, to kind of go to your separate corners to have that clear head because the energy between you guys is so incredibly strong. So the Divine Feminine is honoring herself and her intuition, trusting her intuition, 
is maybe a little bit triggering to the divine masculine, but it's also igniting a new level of awakening and growth within the divine masculine. And this is where some of that divine energy is coming in. They might not like that because they might be very comfortable in who they were and in their comfort zone and in whatever energy that they were in because that's what they knew. But this is a growth journey. Your whole life is a growth journey, but especially when you are activated to ascension, spiritual awakening does not just happen on one level. It's not just I'm spiritually awake and that's done. Spiritual awakening, ascension is a constant evolution and expansion. Energy cannot remain stagnant. Energy must flow. Energy must continue to move. And so being energy, you are constantly in a state of evolution and expansion. So even though it might be really uncomfortable and triggering for the divine masculine, they're becoming more conscious of, oh, this is leading me to something better because this is making me grow. Uh, so I said, I'm sensing a tower moment approaching where on, on the other side will be a breakthrough to so much courage and authentic self-esteem, confidence really growing. And we've been picking up on that confidence coming through in the past several readings. Divine Mashin will see himself, his counterpart, and the world around him through a new lens, which creates the path to personal fulfillment. So this is the awakening. This is the ascension. This is growth, evolution, and expansion that the divine masculine is going through. Divine feminine, you've been through this. You're going through this constantly, this death and rebirth energy. You've been through this. Divine masculine is going through this heavy now. We have temperance and we have the fool. A lot of energy is balancing out. And what I like about this, sir, show me, you have the death card, this ending energy with the fool, this beginning energy. So you might feel like something is ending, but something is just beginning. You might feel like something is imbalanced within the connection, but something is actually energetically balancing out here. Okay. Nope, did not want to do that. Okay, as soon as I did it, I said, nope, I don't want to do that. Okay, all right, so let's get to the headspace. What is going on for the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine? For the Divine Masculine, again, a growing sense of self-confidence. And confidence doesn't come from external factors. Confidence doesn't come from how many cars you own or how many houses you have or how many XYZ you have, how much money you make or what your career status is or your economic status is. That's not confidence. That is the old paradigm. Confidence comes from understanding who you are, knowing who you are. It comes from that inner authority, really connecting with oneself through knowing oneself, through being aware of oneself. And we've talked about and channeled how both counterparts have really gone into the underworld of themselves to excavate all of that, what I like to call soul sludge, all of the healing you've done, all of the, the, the wounding that you've had really going deep into the underworld of oneself, understanding your shadows, really seeing your light, seeing yourself in the beauty of both and how you shine light on those shadows. Divine Masculine has been going through that growth period and has been very painful is what I'm hear hearing. Very painful, especially as there's been a lot of trauma that the Divine Masculine is kind of excavating, um, bringing to their awareness and healing, um, especially for those who experience trauma. And as a result, they suppressed their emotions because of that trauma. Emotions, becoming really vulnerable with your emotions, that is part of the feminine energy that rises. And for that inner union, you have the balance of the masculine and the feminine energies. So as the feminine energy is rising, they're being asked to really be vulnerable with themselves, to really be intimate with themselves, to really get to know and feel their emotions so they can heal through their emotions, so that they can heal and express themselves as the divine being that they are. So because of that, or as a result of that, their confidence is really growing. Now, there does seem to be a little bit of confusion, at least in the energies right now in the headspace that's being cleared. I do feel like there's this newfound sense of confidence. Um, 
we had talked about this in the Ascension Relationship Energy Update, where it feels like the mind is coming online and connecting more with the heart, where it had been disconnected, where it had felt separated. And I feel like that's part of where this sense of newfound confidence is coming through. And that's just what I'm getting with the Six of Wands. It's not traditionally a card of confidence, but that's what it feels like. It feels more like confidence here. But there is some some confusion that's coming through here, but I do feel like they're working through it. Um, what I'm actually picking up on is some of the confusion could be their emotions. Um, what I'm hearing is they could be a little bit confused as far as how you feel towards them. I'm hearing making up stories. So they might be making assumptions. They might be making up stories in their mind. There's a lot of illusion that is really thick right now. And I feel like the only thing that's really going to bridge that gap is communication. But that communication doesn't feel like it's going to come in until I'm hearing some of the dust settles. I feel like this was from the full moon eclipse that we just had and i feel uh like it's from the 11 11 portal where there were major energy shifts i do feel like this new moon that's coming up um on november 22nd 23rd is going to shift a lot of this um subtle temperance tempering that some of that energy i'm seeing the temperance card so settle some of the the dust that was kicked up from a lot of this cosmic support energy that we experienced recently um but again, that illusion very thick and I feel like they're kind of wading their way through it. What is false? What is true? What is real? What is not? Um, they're reminding me of the Hunger Games where Katniss and Peeta are having that exchange. Um, it's almost like Peeta has been... Oh, that's what it is. It's when Peeta was brainwashed by the Capitol and he's trying to shift through all of the illusion, all the false beliefs, all the false stories that he was told. Um, and Katniss, he's saying, is this real or not real? I forget what, maybe I think that's what it is. Real or not real? And Katniss says, real, not real, real, not real, you know, to, to kind of help PETA discern and differentiate uh, between what was a, a story and what is true. I feel like they're doing that within themselves. I feel like they're beginning to really discern between what is the stories that their mind creates, mind being a very powerful tool, and what their heart is really telling them. And I'm also hearing beginning to take back control of their mind in the sense of beginning to be aware of their mind and use that tool as conscious creators now, not just repeating stories of the past. That's what it is. Projections, past pain, past patterns, past traumas have been replaying over and over for them. And so especially when it comes to the divine feminine, they were projecting a lot of the past trauma onto their divine feminine. Um, past pain, past relationships, past situations onto the divine feminine. But they're starting to discern what is real and what is not real. What is an old pattern, an old belief, an old trauma that's just coming up to the surface? What is just a story that's replaying in their mind? They're starting to really have that sense of discernment and see what is true and what is not. Again, sifting through the debris. And they're beginning to understand this Eight of Pentacles. I'm getting the word focus. They're beginning to really focus this energy and become a conscious creator. Um, again, using their mind for the power of good to create new stories, to create a new life for themselves, to create a new version for themselves. Uh, in essence, flipping the script. So if their mind is telling them negative stories over and over and over, using their mind as a powerful tool to flip the script into something else, to create something else. Because, again, it's online with their heart. And their heart is the honest truth. But sometimes, especially these divine masculines, we get so caught up in their anxious mind. Um, to articulate this a little bit better, it's like their heart is making them feel one way, but their mind creates a story and tells them something else, and so they begin believing their mind. Now the heart and the mind coming into alignment, connecting, they're beginning to understand what is the old pattern, what is the old belief, what is the old trauma, the old story, and feel into their heart space for that truth. What I like about this Eight of Pentacles energy, like I was picking up on focus, is I feel like they are focused on 
the truth with your divine feminine. This feels like divine feminine energy. How loving, nurturing, caring she always has been. And I'm also getting a lot of throat chakra energy here. How expressive and consistently expressive she's been. Consistent in her loving. Consisting in her expression. Consistent in her behaviors. That does not mean that she hasn't had her own wounding, that she hasn't had her own role to play, but she was always coming at it from this very loving nature. Whereas I feel like the Divine Masculine, especially in these counterpart connections, um, didn't always treat the feminine as she deserved. Um, didn't always value or see the value of the Divine Feminine because of their own past experiences with feminine energy I'm hearing, uh, by which I mean uh, distorted feminine energy, past experiences with distorted feminine energy, which repressed the feminine energy within them so they couldn't honor the divine feminine. Divine, when I say about the divine feminine, I mean that's not to say that she should be put on a pedestal. And I feel like the divine masculine is beginning to realize that, but honor her Despite that, despite her not needing to be put on a pedestal, but recognizing the truth and beauty of who she is without that pedestal, which is beautiful, which is beautiful. So that feels like the headspace. It does feel like he is focused on the divine feminine, like he is focused on clearing the way, clearing the cobwebs in his mind to really see her in her light, to see her for who she truly has always been to him and for him. I'm also hearing within him. Divine Feminines, I feel like we talked a little bit about this energy here. You have the Eight of Pentacles mirroring the Divine Masculine's Eight of Pentacles. You have the Five of Pentacles and you have the Ten of Wands and the Queen of Swords. I feel like you have been uh, really focused on yourself. You've really been maybe focused on your work, maybe focused on your business, maybe focused on projects, family, friends, whatever this is, your own life, your own sacred path. You've really been focused um, and I like that energy. That energy feels really good um, because it means that you're not outside of yourself. It means that you are really on your path and not deviating from your path. However, I feel like with the Five of Pentacles here, it has felt somewhat lonely lately. Um, I feel like especially when it comes to the Divine Masculine, I feel like you feel really fulfilled in other areas of your life. But when it comes to the Divine Masculine, it's like exactly what I was saying. It's like, where are you? Where are you? Where have you been? Um, feeling left out in the cold. Some abandonment wounds might be coming up for the Divine Feminine. Um, with the Ten of Wands here and the Queen of Swords, I do feel like you're letting this go. I do feel like you're letting down that burden, like you've closed out a cycle of this abandonment. Again, let yourself be loved. Let the universe love you. Allow yourself to receive. Whether this is another relationship this is soul family. This is just from the universe as a whole. There's so much abundant love that is coming into you that is helping to heal this, this left out in the cold kind of energy, this abandoned energy. Um, I, it, when I speak for myself, you know, when I, when I say that I met somebody, you know, I'm just enjoying the company. It's nothing romantic. Um, as of yet, it remains to be seen, but I'm just allowing my heart to be open to potential, to whatever it needs to be. However, I am very cognizant of the way I feel for my Divine Masculine. The way I feel for my Divine Masculine is not the way I feel for this person. Um, again, this new person is very new. I'm understanding what soulmate is compared to Twin Flame. Um, it feels it feels very good. It feels very joyful. It feels, feels very open, um, innocent, and easy. It's not quite the depth or the igniting energy as the Divine Masculine. My Divine Masculine sees me, sees all of me. But there's so much that just was not working in our physical experience. It's very confusing. I'm going to talk about that in my own experiences um, later down the line. It's because it's very confusing. But I'm sharing my own experience because it's like allow yourself to heal. And I feel like that's what this connection is. You know, it could be something else. Who knows? I'm just allowing myself to be open to whatever it is. But as of right now, it feels like it's a very healing energy. 
um, because I have a lot to heal myself within relationships. Uh, I have a lot to heal when it comes to allowing myself to receive somebody putting in the effort, to receive um, somebody wanting to put in the effort, wanting to communicate, wanting to share themselves. Um, it's a very different energy when you allow yourself to open up to receiving and letting yourself be loved. Um, when I say loved, within my own experience, it's not love there. <laughs> Let me just make that clear. It is very new. Um, but there's a friendship there. And I appreciate that. And I can feel the universe loving me through this person by allowing me to receive. And me loving myself, allowing myself to receive. And maybe even my counterpart loving me through this person when he can't be here for me. Energy is always flowing. And the universe works through so many different people. I'm not articulating my own experience very well. It's going to be very confusing because it's very confusing for me. But I'm trying to articulate the energy here of you're focused on your, your path. You might be feeling a little bit left out in the cold when it comes to your divine counterpart. But also it's like you're healing that energy. You're clearing that energy. With the Queen of Swords here, you are really standing in your power and allowing yourself to express yourself in the truth of who you are and the fullness of who you are, not holding yourself back. You're not in the wounded state that you were in. And so I feel like there's a lot of healing that is happening right now with regards to rejection, neglect, abandonment. And for some of you, like myself, you could be healing that through the attention of other people. Again, relationships, friendships, soul family. Allowing yourself to receive that love where you had held yourself back from receiving that love or you had been too much in the giving state that you weren't able to, to receive. Or maybe somebody wasn't capable of giving to you and so you held yourself back from wanting to receive, from letting that effort be shown to you. However the situation, there's a healing that is taking place. It could be through other people. It could be through situations. It could be through different dynamics. But there is a burden of abandonment, a burden of neglect, a burden of rejection that you are really putting down. Allowing yourself to be loved and allowing yourself to open up in the expansive energy of love. I did not articulate my experience very well. I'm going to have a, I'm still trying to process it. I'm still trying to understand it. I, uh, I'm very grateful for this connection because he has shown me a lot about myself um, and a lot about my counterpart, a lot about the depth of love that I have for my counterpart, um, but also allowing myself to be open again, where I had closed myself off out of pain. Um, where I felt very broken, allowing myself to heal. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting energy. Where is the Divine Masculine in the heart space? Where is the Divine Masculine in the heart space? oh my gosh I'm hearing the word flooded um, they might be flooded with emotions right now where's the divine masculine in the heart space temperance three of cups and one more card please one more card. Where's the divine masculine in the heart space? And the four of cups. Um, and the ace of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. And the king of swords. I do feel like they want to come forward. They want this new beginning. They're, they're trying to figure out 
how to manifest this in the physical world. I feel like they don't quite know what action to take, even though they feel like there does need to be some kind of expression, there does need to be some kind of communication. They're recognizing that they do have to, I'm hearing leadership, they do have to stand up and take that leadership role, especially when it comes to communication in order to get the wheel turning again. Um, it does really feel like they're not quite sure how to make this happen. Um, I'm getting an interesting energy with this wheel card. You see this person behind here? I'm actually seeing more in my third eye. Um, this, like, uh, the rib cage and how the rib cage protects the heart. And it's almost like there's this guarded energy here trying to protect the heart. Um, there's this fear of rejection. There's this fear of their own neglect, their own abandonment that I feel like they're really working through. And I feel like that's tied in with this energy. So they're flooded with emotions in their heart space. But I do feel like with the temperance card, they're trying to balance this out. However, there we go. However, I feel like they're a little bit closed down to... This feels like hermit energy with the three of cups here. Um, you guys know that three of cups is my union card. It's the two cups just like this pouring into the third. And what is that? It's the divine masculine, the divine feminine with full cups of their own pouring into their relationship. This is also the trinity energy with God. This is that full soul merge. This is that union energy for me. However, while there's this balancing out taking place, while they're, they're, they're coming into their own inner union as a process, it's taking a little bit of time, which is fine, you know, it's a process. I do feel like they're shut down in a way, perhaps to other people. This person might have explored other relationships, other connections, uh, before realizing that nothing compares to their divine feminines. Divine feminines, you've realized this too. Nothing quite compares to their divine masculine. However, you're kind of stuck in your mind my divine masculine isn't here so what choice do i have but to move forward and allow myself to be loved and allow myself to love and open up and it doesn't have to be love as in like romantic love but just to open up to love open up to potential open up to possibility divine masculine i feel like they might have gone through that exploration phase trying to figure out what this connection meant to them and i feel like now that's shut down um, it feels like they're back in the cave in a way where they are not entertaining other people, not wanting to entertain other people because it's like nothing else compares. And because of that, they're feeling this sense of remorse. They're feeling this sense of regret. The four of cups for me is the sense of missed opportunity. Um, it's almost like they could be bored with other people, apathetic to other connections, because it just doesn't feel the same, and they're beginning to really understand this. Again, they're seeing their divine feminine in a new light, having a shift in perception, but it's also because of their expanded heart, really allowing themselves to feel what they've always felt for the divine feminine, but before haven't allowed themselves to acknowledge. Again, I'm getting that feeling of, if I gave in to my heart's desire, if I... If I allowed myself to love you as fully as I do, what would become of me? I would just be lost. Maybe I would lose my sense of independence. Maybe I feel like I would lose my freedom. Maybe I feel like I would lose myself. But that's because they didn't know themselves. Now that they're getting to know themselves, they understand that connection, especially with their divine feminine, is freedom, is independence, is this higher level of love that they've always desired because they've always felt within themselves your counterpart being you. So they're feeling this regret around this missed opportunity. They're recognizing that they had missed an opportunity because they were so focused on the past. They were focused on other connections, on other people and other dynamics. A very selfish energy coming through here and understanding that they were in a selfish energy um, because they were trying to protect their heart. They were trying to hold themselves back. So with this energy here, it's like they don't quite know how to move that wheel forward, how to uh, m create this new beginning in a very tangible reality. They do understand that they need to step up and be that leader, be that king energy, be that conscious masculine, but it feels like they're not quite sure how to do that yet. I'm also getting a lot of solar plexus energy, um, a lot of worth issues. 
uh, almost feeling like, I just don't think I can. I just don't know if I'm worthy of it. I just don't know if I can do it. Um, but that's just part of the ego death. That's part of the, the, the integration. Um, that's part of the tower moments and the ascension process that they're experiencing. Uh, it's part of the breakdown in order to break through. Remember when I said that they're going to be breaking through to a lot of courage and a lot of understanding of themselves, connecting to themselves? This energy is all part of it. So it might be like the Divine Mashin is going through a very difficult time right now. But um, this is all part of their expansion and their ascension. Divine Feminine, where are you in the heart space? King of Cups. Divine Feminine, where are you in the heart space? Where are you in the heart space? Where are you in the heart space? Five of Cups, you guys are mirroring each other. This is a Four of Cups, but I remember I said it was giving me Five of Cups energy. There's a lot of mirroring energy that's kind of going on here. One more card for this energy, please. Heart space for the Divine Feminine. Heart space for the Divine Feminine. And the Two of Wands. Divine Feminines, and you have the King of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Uh, stability, security, um, presence. King of Pentacles for me is more the Divine Masculine than even the Emperor is. Because I really like the grounded nature, the presence, the conscious energy that comes from the King of Pentacles. Very stable, very provider, protector, wanting to take care of the Divine Feminine, hold space for the Divine Feminine, um, to really... Um, I'll just point you guys to the Ascension Relationships reading again um, because it's that energy of the waterfall where the Divine Feminine is really this wild energy, complex, um, deep in her feelings and her emotions and her intuition, just a depth, a plethora of emotion, a, a plethora and a depth to who she is. The Divine Masculine is able to hold that space for her, is able to really care for her and, and hold that, that, that place for her. So I love the King of Pentacles. Again, more Divine Masculine than even the Emperor is because of what he represents. So he's at the bottom of the deck. I'm feeling the King of Cups. Again, let yourself be loved. Let yourself be loved. This could be your own energy, Divine Feminine. This could be your Masculine's energy. This could be somebody else's energy. But I'm just feeling like let yourself be loved. Again, we started the reading with this. Let yourself be loved by your Divine Masculine, even if it's just energetically. Don't block your heart off to the energy that you're feeling from your Divine Masculine, even if they are not here in the present. Even if you are or have been in the past feeling abandoned, you know, keep in tune with the higher self um, and allow yourself to just connect with the higher self and feel that love between you because that is your own inner union where there is no lack, even though there is distance, even though there's no communication, even though the 3D looks like this clusterfuck, from the higher perspective, from the higher self, there is always love between you. So let yourself be loved. Let yourself love. Let yourself love your masculine. Let yourself love and be open to loving your masculine. Don't hold back your love. You're not meant to. That's not who you are, Divine Feminine. Let yourself love and be loved. And even let yourself be loved by other people, by the universe, by other relationships, by other connections. Because maybe there are other connections that you need to explore for your own healing, for your own growth. There are reasons for everything along this journey. Let yourself be open to them. Let yourself be open to the love that you have within yourself. With the Five of Cups here and the Two of Wands, it feels like you're not quite sure where you're headed. You're not quite sure what path to take, but you only have to take the path of the heart. I want to get some more for the Divine Feminine here. Tell me about the heart space for the Divine Feminine, please. Tell me about the heart space for the Divine Feminine. Yeah, wanting something of equal reciprocity, wanting something of equal give and receive. And I'm also getting the energy of this is what's coming for you. This five of cups feels like it was in the past where there was so much pain and so much just 
um, so much, I don't want to say the word regret or remorse because it doesn't feel like regret or remorse. It doesn't feel like guilt. It doesn't feel like shame. It just feels like looking at the past or holding on to the past, whatever that was. But you're not able to see that there are two cups here that are completely full. The five of cups is the energy that reminding me of like spill it, crying over spilled milk. Um, that's not to say that whatever it is that you're upset about, um, should be negated. Uh, doesn't matter. It does matter. But allow yourself to release the past. Allow yourself to release this pain and just let yourself be loved and choose the path of love. Because what's happening is it's coming in for you. You're, you deserve this. You are, you've done the work. You have done the healing. You have recognized your patterns, shifted those behaviors, shifted those patterns, been healing your traumas, been aware of yourself. You have gone deep into yourself, connecting with yourself, connecting with God. You've done this ascension work. You've mastered yourself in so many ways. And so I feel like the scales are balancing out for you. Um, and I feel like you're really seeing things very clearly on this. Um, this could be a new beginning with regards to expression. How do you express yourself in the world? How do you express yourself in relationship? How do you honor yourself in relationship now? How are you balancing the scales within you? And because of that, you're going to see that reflected in connections or relationships that you have going forward. But let yourself be open to that love and yeah look king of swords at the bottom of the deck and then there is the temperance card there's a heavy balancing out that is happening here and i do feel like king of swords king of swords i do feel like there's some kind of communication that is going to come in for you that's going to help balance this out within you even more and help bring clarity that is going to help heal this process um for some it's going to heal you together with your who is your counterpart for others it's going to perhaps close out a cycle but you only know for sure what that is so take that as it resonates for you there's a a lot that is happening right now we're in the thick of the illusion there's a lot that is happening right now your job is as feminines especially is just to keep opening yourself to love and the presence of love and the healing nature of love and don't have expectations don't attach to anything just let yourself flow just let yourself be and just let yourself enjoy the path that you're choosing the path of love and see where it leads with your counterpart with other parties with other dynamics with other mission businesses opportunities Whatever it is, you are manifesting so much in your life right now, Divine Feminine. Again, you were that master magician. You were that manifester. You are manifesting so much in your life right now. Let yourself be open. Let yourself love. All right, you guys. Wow. <laughs> this was helpful for me as well. I hope that it resonated with you. Please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know how it resonated for you, if it resonated for you. And we'll be back this week with some more Sacred Union energy updates. I'm sending you so much love and so much light. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.